Luck on Sunday, proudly sponsored by our Basti Ekruel Dubai. Welcome back. You're watching Luck on Sunday. Good luck to Harry Skelton as he makes his way within the speed limit <laughs> to, mar to market raisin this afternoon. Uh, good news is we are still racing in front of crowds in this country. That may not be the case for much longer. We will be discussing the impact of coronavirus at around about 11 o'clock and thereafter until the end of the programme with a variety of guests who will be joining us on the line. Bryony Frost and Lee Mottishead still with me and I thought we'd use the time between now and then, Bryony, just to sort of take stock of, of where you're at and, uh, and how, how this season's been going and, and how happy or otherwise you, you are, really. Yeah, I mean, I'm cool, yeah, I keep kicking, keep improving. The, uh, the start of the season was a little steady, um, you know, our horses from Ditch It were, you know, something was a little amiss with them, quite a few of them had ulcers. Um, you know, and, and Neil Kingsyard um, was also in a in a bit of a quiet spell as well. But um, we're on, I think, 43 winners now um, moving forward. And uh, yeah, you just you, you just try and keep your head down and keep moving forward all the time. And what was the final total for last year? 50. Managed to get it. Black Court and Sand Down. I mean, that was. That actually nearly, you know, it was right up there with the Ryanair win uh, for me because um, I'd been out again with my collarbone, so it made it uh, five five months off um, for for the season um, through injury, and that was frustrating. So, and uh, I'd only I don't I hadn't jumped for five weeks to come straight into Sandown. Blackie, I hadn't got him a winner yet. I was trying to get to 50. I knew I got the title in the bag, so that was that was mm. cool. But a lot of people coming up to us and saying, "Hey, the fiver's on you and Blackie." I was like, "Okay," <laughs> you know. But and Paul, you know, saying he's ready. This is his race this year, and and yeah, for it for it to happen, to come back off injury, um, go straight into the Grade Two, win with a you know a horse that that put you on the map. Your first winner is a conditional, now your last winner is a conditional. It was just a, a round-up of a, an un, unreal year. Yeah, so you got your 50, you got your championship, you were associated with these marquee horses as well. It, it, can't, it can't sustain in, in some senses because you're not going to be a conditional anymore, so you don't have a claim. Yeah. The horses, once they either reach their peak or get badly handicapped, aren't going to be quite the same as, as they were. So you have to find renewal again, don't you? You have to find different ways of sustaining your own profile and yeah, your own success. You've got to keep a rhythm and you've got to keep trying to get the opportunities. You know, um, one of my best moves in my life to date was to walk through the, the gates at Ditchit, you know, to, to be under the wing of Paul and Clifford, um, you know, and them to, to take me to, to heights that I would have never even thought my career could go to, um, you know, and my riding improves, um, hopefully time in and time out when I'm, I'm going out on track, that's what I'm trying to do. Um, and I've got good support around me. You know, I have Dave Roberts as an agent, I have my dad, um, and now I've, I've managed to, to um, be stable jockey for Neil King, you know, a yard that's uh, a young yard that's moving forward. Are you finding those two roles dovetailing quite well? Um, what, between Paul and Neil King? Yeah, yeah um, you know, I'm loyal to Paul, straight off. I ride whatever Paul puts me on, I'll ride. Um, that's, you know, that's, that's going to be always the way it is, um, um, you know, and, and then. Um, you know, if I'm not riding for Paul, then it's and then it's Neil. Um, and I, I can get. I've got some really nice outside rides. Um, you know what? What um, Dave manages to find me. So that's just all about just keeping yourself. I mean, they do say your, your season after being a conditional losing your claim is the toughest one. Um, I actually feel like if that's the case, then it, then it's going well. And, and just in terms of in terms of your your role with Paul, and Paul is a is a, an upfront kind of guy. He's going to tell you when you got it right. He's going to tell you when he, when you got it wrong. You, you had the race at Kempton the other day with Black Court and lined yeah. up on the outside. You weren't spared, but I think you'd already you'd already got your you'd already got your self criticism in before you'd got off the horse. Oh, look, you? I mean, jockeys, we you, there is no one that's going to sh shoot ourselves harder than ourselves. You know, that's as simple as that. Um, and I, you will always be the first to say. I cost you that race, you know, and, uh, you know, Blackie were down at the start for a long time. He's just messing about with me. Normally I line up, I've always lined up wide on him anyway because um, it's just always the way it's gone and it's always worked. This time it didn't. And, of course, you lose a split second at the start. You're two lengths behind at the first, especially with Kempton in there. It's such a fast track. We had a nightmare of a run with fallers and loose horses. And, and that race will bug me throughout the season and probably one that I'll always think, you know, if I had got my normal start and my normal race, yeah, you know, best horse in the race. Um, and, yeah, I came straight into the paddock and I said 
to his owners and Paul just said, held my hands up and said, I cost you that race, I'm sorry. You know? And that's that. Bet three six five gold cup at Sandown at the end of the yeah. season. That's yeah. the way you're, that's the way you're <laughs> to gonna try, repay. Yeah, try and fly the flag a bit better for the guys, yeah. Uh, you you're being hard on yourself. I I was talking about last year, it was such a bizarre year in terms of the amount of publicity you got, the profile you got, you were sort of racing's uh, poster woman, if you like, and it's very difficult to, to set the bar that high, both in terms of what you're doing on the horse and off the horse, and just to keep, keep jumping over it. Have you found you've had to sort of adjust your expectations a bit? Oh, I don't know. Look, I mean, I, I never focus too much on it. You know, it's always a, a race at a time. Um, and you know, I'm I'm still young, in, and I, I think on one of my my little book that I keep, I'm on 1,253 rides in my life or something now. So approximately, yeah, around there. Yeah. I should have brought it in, and I could tell you exactly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's the thing I learned off Dad. He always had a book of you know the the number of ride, the horse, the meeting, the owner, and the trainer, and where he was, where he finished. And it's just something I remember looking through when I was a kid, and then seeing little Paul Vier you know, all highlighted out on the Grand National. I thought, wow, that'd be really cool, wouldn't it? When you win a big race, to have it there, and you go, that was the day on that ride, I won mm. that race. And yeah, I, I've done it, so you know. Um, so yeah, from my very first unseat at Fleet Park on Prudent George for, for Dad, um, at the last, as I had to walk through the crowd, zero clapping me in, thinking I was very silly. Um, yeah, to, to this day, yeah. But Lee, I think it's a fair point to make. I mean, Racing has got an awful lot from, from Bryony already in a very yeah. short space of time. Yeah. But we're greedy. We get a lot from people. We then expect even more in terms of what they give and give and give in terms of their time and, uh, and their abilities and so forth. It's not, it's, not straightforward. it's not straightforward. It's not, no. And the problem, if you're someone like, like Bryony, is there are very few people like Bryony. There's probably been no one like Bryony in racing in terms of having the you ability. Don't, you, don't, you don't mind that, do you, Brian? Well, I've always been called a little bit different. Yes, yeah, fine. <laughs> it's meant to compliment, <laughs> but no, nobody I, I know of has been able to better describe the relationship and the connection mm. between horse and jockey in a race in a way that is so engaging to to viewers, listeners, or readers. The problem for Bryony is because nobody has done that as well as she has done, we, the media, and to an extent racing fans as well, are probably going after Bryony all the time, wanting to, to hear more and learn more and know more. Um, and I, I think, I, well, I don't know, but I, if that was me, I'd, I'd probably find that quite difficult because to an extent you're doing, you want to do your job, but your job in a way that other people's jobs isn't, is also to be sort of racing PR. Um, yeah. And that, that, that presumably puts extra pressure on you. I mean, look, I, I think it's very important. I've I got to give time to anyone and everyone in, in my life because there's going to be a moment I need, I need to take time off somebody. And uh, I, I, I don't see it as a, as a job or a responsibility to talk about um, my horses, um, my life and how I'm you know, living, a, living my best life. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, I get, I, I, there's some been really cool stories coming through. Like, you know, I get some really cool kids coming up to me, um, you know, from last year with Katie, getting her to the, to the course um, at Cheltenham. Um, I had a, a young boy, um, Owen, um, who suffers from ADHD and autism and he watched uh, his dad sent me a letter to say hey could you send through some britches or something like that um, because you know it makes him really happy to watch Frodon's race and and the interview afterwards and that just takes you a moment that you think actually it's not just me and my bubble with my horse and my owners and my trainers it's actually it's what I'm feeling and the buzz that I get and the proud and you know being connected with with such an amazing animal um, who has an opinion of himself, but yet mm. you're running together. Um, yeah, and then he, he uh, so me and Frodo, we went out and we made a video, you know, just to say, hey, keep shouting us home, you know, and Frodo being Frodo, nibbling away at my hat and pulling me about and just generally being the monkey that he is. And yeah, it's, it's emailed it back to his dad and he said, you know, Owen was running up and down the stairs. So to me, that's really cool. And you just, yeah, I think I don't think of myself as anybody special, anybody different. I just do me, and and like there isn't anywhere better in the world than, or in my opinion, of when you get let go by your lad lash, you canter off down to the start, and it is those moments when you're galloping, 
it's your stride, you, you know, you're feeling them operate underneath you. When you meet those fences or hurdles right, you know, Sir Psycho in the Triumph, those, those hurdles down the back, he was just awesome to be with. You know, the longer he went, I was thinking, he's called Sid at home. I was like, Sid, you can't keep coming this long. But he didn't, he wanted to attack him, you know? Um, and yeah, it's just, it's a good place to be. And you're getting those opportunities still on those very good horses. You mentioned Sir Psycho and Frodon and, you know, horses that are, are going to keep coming and going to keep taking you to the big shows. Yeah, and, that, and I mean, like, you know, you could be the, the best jockey in the world, but if you don't have your horse and your trainer and your owners backing you, then it doesn't matter how good you ride. It really doesn't. Um, I think we're illy named as an athlete to be on our own, you know, as a jockey. Um, it, is an, it is a team, um, and, you know, when you have firepower behind you and you have the opportunities to showcase yourself, then that's, that's the way to go. And like I said, if it wasn't for Paul um, and his belief in me when I was a bumbling amateur, um, to give me the chances, you know, when Meg decided to go uh, to go on the flat and turn, I got to ride some amazing horses like Current Event and join together for Rose Luxton and, and, and you know, my first winner under rules was at Musselboro and Current Event. Mm. You know, so there's been, I mean, my first winner under rules, uh, my first grade one, um, you know, first winner as a conditional. He helped me get my title, you know. Paul, he can train racehorses, but he also gives a massive opportunity to his young jockeys um, as well. And the atmosphere within the, within the yard still as good as ever? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, Paul was, uh, you know, he's a master at what he does, and Clifford as well, behind the scenes. Um, when I was struggling, I, you know, I was a bumbling kid when I came up from Devon, and I found it hard to fit in. Um, you know, I came as a pupil assistant, and yeah, you know, it wasn't easy. Um, and uh, Clifford, you know, after when he's fed, you know, he'd walk around, check all the horses, and turn their lights off, and I'd follow him round. I probably annoyed him more than ever. Kind of, what should I do a bit differently for my schooling and things like that, and and whatnot? And I'd always be on the phone to dad, and yeah, it was, you know, you've got to fit in, you've got to grow up, yeah. And do you feel comfortable with your kind of place in the world now, if you're going to put it like that? Well, yeah, I mean, you, you're going to get. People, the more people know about you, the more they're going to get opinions. Some people aren't going to like me, some people are. And, um, you know, sometimes you get like, oh, she's, you know, in the media again and whatnot. But you, at the end of the day, it's people's opinions, they're not facts on you. And I will always just do me. I'm never going to change by wearing my emotions on the sleeves because somebody took the mickey out of me by saying, oh, what, did he hold your hand, did he? I'm like, well, no, OK, we can't communicate by speaking with each other, our horses, but we communicate in so many different ways between feels, between watching, you know, just the little things there is. You know, you heard Harry talking about politolog, watching his ears. It's being a part of a jockey, you have to communicate through silence. Um, it's all feel, it's all about rhythm, it's all about keeping their breathing. You know, they lose half a lung capacity of jumping a fence badly, you have to then try and find it back for him. He's losing oxygen. He has to... You, as a jockey, your job is to put him in the best possible position in his race to win in the easiest way of doing it. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, I just, yeah, just, I just roll on and try and get thicker skin on me and the people that might not like me, and that's cool. Like, that's fine, and I just keep doing me, and I, I won't shy away of probably being the way that I am, yeah. So it's a lot about how some people are, that they wouldn't like somebody who is doing such an outstanding job at promoting and selling the sport. And if some of those people are even involved in racing, that's even worse. Isn't it, isn't it classic tall poppy syndrome with just a little dash of everyday sexism thrown in? And probably, I'm, and probably I'm, jealousy as well. Yeah. And maybe a sense of ina inadequacy relative to somebody else. Because it seems to me that... Brani's not the best jockey riding. Um, she's 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 an outstanding jockey, but she she's she's not she's not at the minute. Better. Sorry? I'll get better. You are you <laughs> you will get better. But but she, but you you wouldn't say would you that no. you're the God no nowhere near the top of my level, and no. I'd, I'd hate to be. But what you yeah. are, you are the best jockey at the moment, as I say, at conveying what it is like to be a jockey, and in the current climate mm. of equine sports and the way people view equine sports. What, some th what somebody like Bryony can do in conveying that relationship and in conveying that passion and care for horses yeah. is absolutely invaluable. And everyone in racing should recognise that. And I think, broadly speaking, most of, most of racing does. But the game, you must have found, even in the last two years, has, is changing so fast. And the expectations of the, 
the sports participants is changing so fast. We were talking about how well the jockeys had played Cheltenham effectively this year. Yeah, I mean, the world is always changing, isn't it? Um, from from way back when, you know, I, I'm always talking to Dad about when he was riding and, and even the racing and how it's changing out on track and how the horses are running and whatnot um, all the way through. Um, and I think it's good that it is changing and hopefully we keep changing it for more positive ways. Um, you know, and like... Yeah, you've got to respect rules at the end of the day. Rules are there to improve, um, not so much to restrain or restrict. Um, I think it's just trying to improve the sport as it goes. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, there's been some... I mean, the Fox Hunters, for example. I mean, what a wonderful story with the O'Sullivans. I mean, that's just... Mm. That, that's what racing can bring, you know? That, that, the, the connection between your horses and the stories behind them. Every horse has his story. You know, and every every jockey, every trainer, and every owner have their stories. And to be able to, you know, like, they're, they're, I don't think there's many stories, uh, many sports that you can walk into the weighing room and interview, um, you know, say a footballer before he comes straight out on pitch. You you can see the emotions, you can see what's going what's going through our heads as well, and it just opens it up that it's not just on the screen, it's not just the horses running it's it's all the emotions the pressures yeah everything behind the sport that makes it great well you're paid to ride horses which you do extremely well exactly. you're generally speaking not not paid to to sell the sport and you do it uh, even better so uh, for that thank you and thank you very oh, much thanks. for coming in again today yeah, i know you're cool. gonna i know it's you're cool gonna speak to you guys again I know <laughs> <laughs> we we don't forget about you i try and get you on the show every week but you're just too busy now just... um uh, we're, you're going to hang around, aren't you? Because we're going to yeah, cool. we're going to we're going to cheer everyone up by talking about coronavirus oh, for yeah. the next half an hour. <laughs> yeah, and, sure thing. Uh, <laughs> that that and systematic doping, right? Um, we're going to take we're going to take a short break, and we will be back. We're going to talk to Brian Kavanagh from Horse Racing Ireland. We're going to talk to leading American trainer Graham Motion. We're going to talk to Dr. Richard Newland, and I'll be passing on the thoughts that I garnered from uh, the uh, horse racing advisory steering group on coronavirus yesterday. So stay tuned. Luck on Sunday, proudly sponsored by Albasti Equiwell Dubai.